So we've come down to Sunshine Beach because we want to do our walk through the Noosa National Park. Now most people actually will go and park um, over near the National Park. There's um, parks over near there. Near Hastings Street. Yeah, near Hastings Street. So we've actually come to Sunshine Beach because usually there's less people here. Um, easy to find a park, not always guaranteed though. So we're going to start our journey from here. The only difference about starting from here um, instead of over there is it's a longer walk um, but you'll get to see a lot more of the coastline um, making it to Sunshine Beach. The other thing is too is um, there are facilities here for water, for toilets and stuff like that. A few shops. A few shops, barbecue facilities, you can, ha you can have a lunch and stuff here. But um, from here you've got to make your all the way to Tea Tree uh, which is a fair walk. It's uh, about um, five and a half? Five and a half, five and a half kilometres, but it's not flat walking, it's up hills, it's um, through sand and stuff like that. Um, so you're probably looking at just over an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, depending on how you walk, before you get to the next um, water stop or toilet stop or anything like that. Then after that, um, they become a bit closer together. So consider that if you're going to start from here, um, make sure you use the facilities first. As we make our way down to the beach, um, it's looking pretty nasty out there, pretty windy. Um, it's not always like this, it's usually quite a beautiful beach. So. There's only about one and a half kilometers to get to the end of Sunshine Beach. And then you start this little rock scramble to get up over to Paradise Caves. Just remember, um, make sure you're comfortable with this sort of rock scrambling before you attempt it. Also, don't forget to stop and just admire the beautiful views. As you come up over the headland, um, the caves will just be down here on the left. So we'll go and have a look at them now. These are the sort of views that you're gonna miss out on if you do that traditional walk from the day use area out to Hell's Gate. You won't get to see the views like Paradise Caves. And just remember to make sure you're comfortable because it can get very slippery here with the water and the loose rocks. This is where we are at the moment. We just went out to there, um, coming back, and we're gonna to try to make our way right through there and down to there if we can make it. This is where the fun begins. Well, that is if you enjoy climbing stairs. There's 219 stairs in this section. My legs are starting to burn a little bit, nearly to the top. And whoever was kind enough to put this seat here to enjoy this view, you're a genius. Starting to go back downhill, so that's good.
we could go where that track tells us and where the path goes, but we've got a secret spot that we'll take you to. So several other people have been out there too, so it wasn't us that actually made the track. It's windy up here. So just over there, you'll notice a little rock formation that is referred to as lion rock. Um, we think. We think. <laughs> Apparently it looks like a lion from some direction, but not, not from this direction, it doesn't. Unless you can see it, let us know in the comments. We're just about to make our way down to Alexandra Bay. Now locals will actually refer to this as A Bay. Um, now unofficially it's a clothing optional beach so um, <laughs> now we are opting to keep our clothes on. We are but it's unofficial so you can still get fined for for it um, but um, we've got to be wary about our camera use down there in case there are people deciding not to put their clothing on. Um, living free. I living think they living call it. free. Um, when it's unofficial but you want it to be official, just grab a marker pen and write it on there yourself. So, as we mentioned, that this is um, unofficially a clothing optional. Um, just notice out the side of my eye, like um, at least they're wearing hats. You know, got to be sun smart, don't you? <laughs> A little bit wonky but I love you. It's amazing how much this beach can change. Like you'll see behind me a lot of sand and some days there's nothing just right up to the dunes. Now that's not always tide dependent, um, tide does influence it a bit but um, that's how much the landscape here changes. Like sometimes there'll be a lot of sand and then no sand so and when there's no sand you really have to walk up on the dunes up there. Or well, I've been one time with my sister um, and it was basically just rocks the whole way and black sand in between. So, yeah, it changes a lot. You'll notice um, all the beaches will have these little signs with numbers on it and we call them the um, beach exits or the beach entry um, numbers. And they're really handy for two reasons. One, if you have to contact emergency services, you tell them that number. Uh, also, if you're meeting up with some friends, you just tell them that number as well and they'll know where to meet you. Who requested the stairs again? Not me. Well, I can't complain about the stairs anymore. And now it's just a ramp. There's still a... Yeah, <laughs> a decent ramp. Now you've got a couple of options when you get here. I would suggest that if you're going for scenic um, views, you're going to go right here to go to Hell's Gate and the day use area. Um, but if you're a runner, um, the Tanglewood is a, a very nice run as well. Now this track has changed slightly from the other headland track. Um, the other headland track was kind of a uh, ready soil where, and with a rock under, underfoot, whereas here it's actually a lot more sandy. Um, you fully expect to get sand in your shoes when you walk this part of the track. This one also, because the lighter colour sand, the heat reflects back up a lot. True. You get very, very hot.
this here would have to be seriously one of my favourite places. That's because um, I'm here. Absolutely. Anywhere that Jack is is my favourite. But for scenery as well, like, um, it, it's just amazing. But it's also the walk out here. For me, it's also the history of running out here with my boys. Um, and Jack, we used to run as a family. And it's just, it's a magic thing. Well, down there is the fairy pools. And we walk past where you go down to the fairy pool, so just around this rope. Now Jack has to turn off here. Um, this is one of her favorite parts of the walk is not necessarily going down to um, Picnic Cove, but as you walk past Picnic Cove, as the water comes in and then it recedes, it's that sound it makes as it carries the rocks off. She absolutely loves it. That was a sound. <gasps> There's dolphins! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Oh, wow! This is probably the hottest part of the walk. Um, just no shade here. It's called Granite Bay down there. Now back into a little bit of shade. Now we'll go down here to Dolphin Point, although I think it's false advertising because I have never in the 15 or so years that I've lived here seen dolphins from this point, but it is beautiful. Actually, story time on that. One time Michael and I were here and we were looking, looking for dolphins, couldn't see any, but we actually both saw a stingray jump out of the water um, and flap its wings. Do they call them wings? I don't know. But yeah, we both saw it and no, we had not been drinking. Now, I do believe you can see dolphins from here. Dolphins. As a kid, I used to always call them dolphins. Um, that's obviously not what it is. Me as a kid, dolphins. Dolphins. And as an adult, I still revert back to that sometimes. So, yep, you'll probably hear it on some of the videos. Um, but there's obviously, you will be able to see them because we just saw them up at Granite Bay. As we said, we've actually done the walk in reverse. We've come from Sunshine Beach. If you come from Hastings Street or Main Beach, all the way out to Dolphin Point is actually wheelchair um, accessible. So if you've got a pram or you happen to be in a wheelchair, um, you can actually get out here. There are a few little hills, so you would have to navigate those, but it is um, flat and paved, you can see on the ground, rather than the um, rocky, sandy track. So we're coming down to Tea Tree. Um, now, I think we've been travelling for nearly, well, seven kilometres, but we have gone off track a fair bit. But yeah, this will be the next spot that you can um, refill your water bottles. But if you actually come from Hastings Street or from... Um, main beach. Main beach or the main car park, it's then it's a lot feet. shorter, like two kilometres. And I think it's about actually one k from the, the actual yeah. national park um, car park. One of the reasons Noosa is so popular is because it's sheltered. So if you've noticed some of the footage earlier, it's really rough water. Um, whereas here, it just looks like a nice consistent wave because it's so protected by the headland. No stairs, but ramp is um, back again. 
and it's steepish. This is known as the boiling pot. Now it's more um, evident why it's called the boiling pot at low tide. So um, if you look down there, you'll start to see it form. So as the water runs out, it drops down like that and it shoots up. But when at a lower tide, it's a bit more um, prominent. Now we're about to just come into the day use area. So down here is the main car park for the um, National Park Walk, but it's, you're very lucky to get a car park down here. And quite often you have to park up the hill or a while away and then you've got a bit of a walk to get here. So as Michael said, we've made it to the entrance of the Noosa National Park. Started, well actually technically we started here ish, walked out onto the beach. We actually went, that's about where the caves were. Had to come back down onto the beach and over. All the way around, we actually snuck out there along A Bay, Hell's Gate, all the way around, tea tree, um, Michael pointed out, the boiling pot, which wasn't boiling very much today. And we're now here, so we're gonna keep walking into here, Hastings Street, there's some um, places that we can get lunch because we are starving. <laughs> so our snacky snacks haven't um, filled us up much, so we're gonna go and get lunch. When we used to run through here, you know, you have all the hills and you think, oh yeah, that's fine, you just knew about them. You always forgot about this one. <laughs> you get to the day use area and think, oh yeah, I'm finished with that run. And then you'd have to run up this to get back to the um, Surf Life Club. There were some people that objected to this um, walkway being built. Really don't know why. Sometimes some people just object for the sake of objecting. But it's such a nice walk. I think their choice of wood, um, just that light colour, was a really good choice. Uh, also, if you actually walk this at night time, it's actually lit up on the bottom. Um, it's a really nice walk. So lots of surfers out there. Very, very popular place to come surfing. I have a sneaking suspicion. They don't care whether they catch a wave or not. <laughs> they're just not at work. They're not at school. They're just sitting, enjoying the scenery as well. I like the fact that they didn't cut down the trees to put the path in. They just went around it. I must admit, I'm a little bit tempted. Ice cream and frozen yogurt. But I hold off, we're not far from lunch now. I'm standing on Noosa Main Beach. Um, it's a beautiful beach. If you, if you look around, you'll see why it's so popular. Now, I just want to share a story with you about this beach as a teacher we used to bring students down here for surf lifesaving. And I could not believe the number of students that would complain, saying, oh, I don't want to go to the beach. Could you imagine this would be your classroom for an afternoon? Amazing, I wish I had this as a kid. Now there's more of a boardwalk to the right, but we're gonna cut left um, to get some lunch and head off to Hastings Street after lunch.
Now, this is Noosa Hastings Street. Basically, if you've got too much money and you don't know what to do with it, just come down here and spend it. Actually, they do have a few um, good ice cream shops along here. You can also come here to do people watching, apparently. This is a strange coffee shop where people just sit and look at the road. So we're just finishing um, the short walk of Hastings Street. Um, you'll notice it's really busy. Now this section down here, um, to the left and to the right, is very popular for weddings. So sometimes what happens is, depending on the size of the wedding party, some people will have it down near here, near the, um, the little jetty. Or if you go to a small party, then over near the beach there's a, another little um, grass section that you can have your wedding at. Many years ago, this path used to continue. And you'll see remnants of it sitting in the water and how the trees have fallen down. So once again, one of our wild storms have come through and just gone, nope, I don't want that path there. I'm gonna take it off. When the kids were little, we used to come down here and go snorkeling just off this section here. Unfortunately, there's not many fish at the moment. Unless Jack's proven me wrong. So Jack and I just got back to the car. Um, we got the bus from Noosa, um, Noosa Heads and we realised you actually need a go-card to use the buses. Like We just don't use public transport that much. Um, we try to use tap on it with our phone. We said, nope, you need a card. So just let us on for free, so we got here anyway. Because we told him that we we're only in the country for another week another or so, week. and yeah. he went, yeah, don't worry about it then. We hope you enjoyed our journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe.